Much so. It felt very cool to go back home and shoot something of this scale and have your general be an Australian. But, you know, an Australian who is probably, in my mind, the most qualified person to turn that book into a movie. Because of his sense of visual scale and, uh, and his interest in tragic love stories. Oh, good. are you kidding? I did. I mean, it was so nice. I remember one of the cameramen was filming me and he goes, Hey, g'day, Ola. And I had worked, he goes, I was on Home and Away with you. Like, he had worked as a cameraman on, like, a TV show that I did when I was 18 or something. So it was, like, 20, I mean, it was amazing. So that was the end of the day of, you know, we, we shot a lot of technically organised, you know, setups that day. And then at the end of the day, he, he kind of let us roll for 10 minutes with three cameras and, and basically give the spectrum of a party from the beginning of an evening to, to what would be the end of the evening and crunch maybe like six hours into 10 minutes. But we could rip stuff apart and, you know, make out and break things and drink and, you know. It was you know. so good. For someone like me who's never, literally never partied, it was a dream come true. The world at large finds that hard to believe, Isla. <laughs> we don't believe it. It's just, but it's true, apparently. <laughs> Well, my feeling was the excess was real. You know, the, the detail in the costume, in, in the set was real. Maybe real plus one? Yeah. But real, detail. So it felt like walking around inside a real place to me. Well, I was lucky that they cast Joel, Joel because I didn't have long to kind of build like a you know romance in my imagination. But because he's Australian and I've known him for a long time, that was kind of I familiar. You're about to tell me that you already had a romance with me in your head. <laughs> and that's a lot of the work. I feel like for me at least, when you have to, I often get cast as like has to have to have a love interest in something, and that's really the most amount of work because you have to keep it alive in your head when you it's not real, you know. No, he well, is. Tom has his opinions, and you know when he, when you have that much money behind you, I guess you feel, I don't know, a certain station in life that, that you're a, a somewhat untouchable and that people listen to you all the time. You know, it's like very famous people. I'm sure they spend a lot of time being listened to and agreed with, you know, and, and maybe Tom's a bit like that. But I had to find a way to make it good for me that I wasn't just some kind of mu moustache twirling villain and that to me was a lot about the relationship of the mm -hmm. interest of finding an oasis with a girl who was of a different kind of status than me and and having real feelings, albeit confused, for her, you know? You know, I just found Baz to be a complete gentleman. He is such a character. He's dressed immaculately, he carries a teacup. He is every bit as, um, you know, he he speaks in, you know, in poetry and pro. I mean, he's just got the most figurative language. He's just a wonderful leader. He's, you know, he's he's so charismatic too, I can't, you know, I can't say that enough. I mean, I felt completely safe in his hands, and even when he pushed me in places that I felt a little uncomfortable, you know, I had to do larger than life things, like come down stairways and talk to sort of no one and like make a speech into the air at a party, things that you would feel like, you know, as an actor, you know, so much of it's a reaction. So if you're not speaking to someone directly, it's quite hard to, I find anyway, quite hard to do that stuff. But I felt so safe with him. I mean, I loved working with him.